Fiji, thank you so much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you and congratulations. Um, thank you for having me. <laughs> well, first off, first you and now Carolyn Everson, two of Facebook's longtime top executives going to Instacart. How did you start the conversation with Carolyn and how did you ultimately get her to make that leap with you? Well, Carolyn and I have been working together for 10 years and I've always admired her. And obviously when she became available, uh, we thought that she would be a fantastic fit for Instacart. I hadn't yet entirely made my decision uh, to join as CEO yet, but the minute I, I decided that, uh, Carolyn and I had long conversations about where we wanted to take the business and realized that there was an incredible opportunity and we were both excited at the chance of working together again. Now, in a statement, a Facebook spokesperson told me, we wish Carolyn the best as she moves into this next chapter. You were running the Facebook app. Carolyn was running global business. And I know you both were important to the two people at the top. So I have to ask, what did Mark and Cheryl say when you delivered this news? Well, I think, you know, after 10 years for both Carolyn and I, I don't think it's surprising to have leaders want to explore other things outside of the company. Uh, so Mark and Cheryl have always been very supportive and I'm very grateful uh, to Facebook for uh, the careers they've allowed me to have there and obviously very excited about my, my next adventure. Carolyn has years of experience in advertising, of course. So the immediate question is, are you going to lean in there? But of course, Instacart's business model is multifaceted, not just advertising, but grocery delivery, revenue from the white label product. How is that composition of revenue right now? And how does that evolve? Well, we think that advertising is going to continue to grow as, as, uh, as part of our profitability. We're growing triple digits uh, year over year. And uh, we are seeing that a lot of CPG brands are finding amazing return on uh, the ads they place with us. So we think that over time, we have an incredible opportunity to build one of the largest ads businesses uh, really catered to CPG brands and food in general, and uh, do that in partnership with our retailers. So uh, that's why we're so excited by this opportunity. That's why with Carolyn and Seth Diller, our, our chief revenue officer, who has years of experience doing that at Amazon, we're now very well set up to go capture that opportunity. Now, more people are vaccinated. So, you know, folks are going back to grocery stores, but obviously the Delta variant is rising. And I'm curious how this is impacting your mid to post pandemic demand. Is Instacart speeding up or slowing down? We're starting to see uh, demand pick up for the kinds of products you would expect, COVID tests, hand sanitizers, masks. So we're really standing ready to help people during this time. Uh, but fundamentally, we're building a business for the long run. And so we, we are uh, working on building all of the capabilities we need to continue to grow in this vastly underpenetrated market. You know, grocery is about $1.4 trillion and only 8% of it is online. So we have a lot of runway for growth ahead of us. So in terms of grocery delivery demand, what does that look like right now? I mean, I know, you know, the numbers that, that we see, it was you know, ticking down slightly, but still it seemed that customers that you acquired during the pandemic were sticking around. Absolutely. I mean, we, we grew about 4x during the pandemic, and now we have a new resting heart rate that is, you know, uh, very much as stabilized at these levels. Uh, and so we have seen, you know, many years of growth pulled forward by, by the pandemic. Uh, and now, you know, it's really a matter of continuing to build a great product so that this penetration of online grocery continues to grow. I know Instacart worked really hard to institute a lot of safety protocols through the pandemic. Now, obviously, things are changing. Google and Facebook have ordered vaccine mandates. Will you mandate that your corporate workers and that your shoppers get vaccinated? This is something that we're, we're still in the process of, of debating, given that, you know, things change every day uh, with, with the COVID situation. So we want to remain extremely flexible and react to the numbers. Uh, but safety is of utmost importance for us. And we have done a lot in particular for our shoppers to make sure that they are safe during this time. We are uh, providing them with free telemedicine appointments. Uh, we are providing them with free supplies uh, like masks to 
protect themselves and uh, stipends for vaccination. So uh, this is something that we take very seriously. And similarly with our consumers, we have had a, a large campaign called Get Vaxxed for Snacks, uh, where uh, you know we encourage people to get vaccinated, tell us they got vaccinated and get free snacks as a, as a result. Um, well, you do almost anything for a free snack. So um, Apoorva Mehta, of course, the founder of Instacart has said Instacart is profitable and will be through the end of the year. How does that profitability continue into next year? Will you be profitable next year uh, and, and beyond? And how profitable without the pandemic tailwinds behind you? Well, what I can say is that our profitability continues to grow and in big part driven by the ads business, but also driven by uh, you know, grocery delivery becoming more profitable as uh, grocery delivery continues to grow and we find ways to be more efficient. Uh, what we wanna do with this profitability is start reinvesting a lot of it into growth and, and continuing uh, to, to capture share in a market that's deeply underpenetrated. Uh, but the company is profitable, will continue to be profitable. Uh, we will just probably decide to reinvest a lot of these profits into uh, continuing to grow. You and Carolyn both have experience building an incredible business uh, and dealing with the problems and challenges that come with big growth. What are the lessons you learned at Facebook, mistakes you made that you want to try to avoid, and what's the good from Facebook that you want to bring as well? I think a lot of what we've learned is to get ahead of issues and uh, really be paranoid about the different ways in which what you're building could potentially go wrong and, and lead to harm. And so that's something we are definitely going to take to heart at Instacart. And that's why I'm so focused on safety in the product, on making sure that we uh, really take care of our consumers and, and our shoppers. And so that's definitely paramount for us. And then on on the good side, there are so many things that we learn that are that are great about Facebook. Uh, in particular, you know how uh, Facebook takes care of its, its employees in a in a very uh, generous way, which is something we absolutely want to make sure uh, Instacart is known for and has a great culture, uh, as well as you know the ability to scale to uh, have a product that tackles the needs of billions of people. Uh, so Facebook mission is a mission that applies to everyone, you know, connecting people and having a social relationship. And we think the Instacart mission is very similar, you know, getting access to food is a universal need that everybody has. And so in our ambition, we, we want uh, Instacart to be an essential service for billions of people. And uh, we think that our experience scaling a product to billions of people will certainly help us. What are some safety issues in the product that you see right now that you're thinking about that maybe you want to combat before they get bigger? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with just making sure that our shoppers are safe and our customers are safe. So we've done a lot in the product to make it so that if a shopper or a customer has a bad interaction with each other, they can report that and they're never matched to the same person again. Um, and obviously, if, if someone is on the shopper side or on the con uh, consumer side is abusive, uh, we actually take actions to remove them from the service. And we think it's incredibly important because shoppers are fundamentally the face of Instacart. You know, when, when you open the door and you see someone who has taken time to pick groceries for you and deliver them to your door, uh, it's a really important human experience. And we want that human experience to be uh, one that leaves you warm and fuzzy instead of uh, an, an experience uh, that, you know, scary or, or um, you know, where you don't feel safe. So we're building a lot of things in the product to make sure that every customer interaction is just wonderful. Women now dominate your executive team, which is a rarity in Silicon Valley and of course, corporate America. Also the majority of your customers and your shoppers are women, though I should say my husband uh, puts in his fair share of Instacart orders himself. I should give him that credit. Mine how too, you, mine too. <laughs> how do you think having so many women at the top will impact the product? and the culture of the company and the culture of the product? Well, I think it's 
critical to have a leadership team that really represents the people you're trying to serve. And, uh, you know, we have 80% of our consumers uh, are women, 70% of our shoppers are women. Uh, so our product is, is very much geared towards the needs of a, of a female audience. And so, you know, having a leadership team that reflects that and, you know, all the way throughout the company, people will make decisions with that customer in mind is going to be incredibly important. Um, as for the company, you know, we want to build a company that uh, encourages different point of views, encourages diversity in all forms, not just gender, but also race, diversity of backgrounds. And I fundamentally believe that I make better decisions when I hear many different point of, points of view. Uh, and I know that Carolyn very much shares that, uh, that leadership ethos with me. So we want to create a culture where diverse voices are heard and it's safe to express your point of view. Now, according to Strive Health, which monitors uh, gig workers, their benefits and their earnings, they say that more women are actually joining the gig economy post pandemic, which is a new trend. How are you thinking about benefits and earnings to account for this new category of worker? Yeah, you know, the thing that's really interesting is that there's actually way more women um, in our, in our, uh, in Instacart shoppers than there are on other app based platforms. And the reason for that is because so much more of the work that they do at Instacart is picking products inside the store, uh, which they tend to prefer rather than just driving around. And so even between the different, uh, you know, app-based companies, you are seeing very different demographic mix uh, of the types of shoppers that the different platforms attract. And so for us, it, it's definitely something that has been on our mind for a very long time. Uh, and that's why I was talking particularly about safety. We are also thinking very hard about, uh, you know, the types of benefits that we want to offer, whether it's health benefits, uh, sick leave, maternity leave, uh, and, and all, of, all of these different things, because uh, fundamentally, we believe that we can combine a type of job that is flexible and that creates immediate earnings opportunity with some financial protection uh, that these shoppers deserve. Um, Instacart recently partnered with Fabric, which specializes in robotics, which is a huge development for your plans in automation and micro fulfillment. Do you have any retail partners for this lined up yet? We do. Uh, well, we're not sharing that quite yet, but we're very excited uh, to have partners uh, who, who are in the process of developing these solutions with us. Uh, we think it's going to massively accelerate uh, the speed at which we can deliver orders, which is going to make the consumer experience a lot better. And it's also going to help shoppers uh, make the whole picking process just a lot more uh a lot easier and so we're very excited about that we want to make grocery delivery faster more affordable and uh that's going to be a very big part of making that happen well there is this big question of how automation impacts your relationship with shoppers if they're not needed in the grocery aisles are they needed at all they're actually very needed even with automation so what happens is that uh with fabric for example robots bring all of the items from different aisles to the shopper so that the shopper doesn't have to wander the aisle, but the shopper still does the picking and has to assemble all of the different baskets. They just do that in a much more efficient way and they also get the benefit of skipping checkout. Uh, and so we think that the human touch is still very much needed, uh, but it's gonna create better conditions for them uh, to, to do that and it's gonna result in more speed for, for the consumer. So if you're fulfilling orders in centralized locations, why doesn't Instacart just become a grocery store itself? I mean, would you ever become a retailer? Absolutely not. Uh, contrary to a lot of our competitors, our strategy is really to be a partner to retailers and offer them all the technologies that they need in order to compete with giants like Amazon. Technologies like fabric, technologies like our white label solutions that really help uh, retailers move their businesses online in a way that still generate profits for them. So our, our strategy is never to compete with them. You're going head to head with Walmart and grocery delivery, Uber and DoorDash want in on this market. And then there's this burgeoning group of smaller, you know, 10 to 15 minute delivery folks, whether it's Joker or Gorillas or GoPuff. 
how are you thinking about the, the competition and would you ever be open to an acquisition? The, the grocery market is so big that obviously there's a lot of different segments of the market. There's the weekly shop where you go on Instacart and you order uh, once a week for all of your essentials. But there's also some other needs where at 9 p.m. you might be craving ice cream and you need it in 15 minutes. Uh, and that's a fundamentally a different need that's about like 20% of the market. Our goal is to address all of the different needs that people have with grocery, but it's not surprising to see a lot of competition trying to tackle very specific needs along the way. Uh, for us, we're just gonna remain focused on delivering the best possible experience uh, alongside our retail partners. Are you open to acquisitions to build out that experience? We're definitely always looking for uh, possible acquisitions and we'll always be open to that. Uh, I think, you know, we, we are very focused on building right now because we have a lot of momentum. But if there are some interesting targets that would complement our, our uh, strategy, of course, we're always open to that. Now, you said you're focusing on uh, expanding internationally. Where will you be setting up shop next? Uh, we, we're, we're not sharing that quite yet, but uh, international is obviously a, a big opportunity for us and uh, something that we're, we're excited to tackle in, in the years to come. For now, we're very focused in the, on the US because the market is so big and, and underpenetrated, uh, but we, we are planning on, on expanding internationally. Now, you talked a bit about ads earlier and, you know, in the grocery delivery business, raise, uh, margins are razor thin. And I'm curious, is your expansion contingent on growing the advertising business and how much of the overall pie will the ad business comprise, whether it's through the end of this year or in the long term? I think ads will continue to grow and grow as a percentage of our revenue and our profitability. Uh, I think the fact that we have such a strong ad business growing so fast, triple digit year over year, is going to allow us to have the profitability we need to continue reinvesting in the business and continuing to grow. So it's a very big driver of growth for us. And uh, will the growth of the ads business impact your relationship with retail partners because aren't you going to be competing for some of the same ad dollars? No, in fact, we really want uh, that to be symbiotic and we want over uh, a long period of time to, to uh, have such a strong technology around advertising that we want to share that technology with retailers who are all trying to monetize uh, their own website with ads. So uh, this is something that we also want to develop for them. And uh, that goes to our entire strategy of building things, not just for our marketplace, but also for our retail partners. Now, as we look out, we're still in a period of uncertainty with the pandemic, but you know, where do you see Instacart a year from now? Um, where do you see Instacart then five years from now? Paint the picture for me. Well, I think you know, we are in a period where people are gonna fundamentally rethink their relationship with food. They are gonna want faster deliveries. They're gonna want more selection of a variety of product, better discovery of new products that are perfect for their diet and a lot more inspiration around what, what they eat. So I think for the consumers, Instacart can be the place that delivers on all of that from you know, which recipes are gonna be interesting uh, for, for you to cook all the way to planning meals for your entire week, all the way to the ice cream that you, you might crave at, at 9 p.m. So for consumers, uh, you know, there's such a, an opportunity to really engage them on, across all of their food needs. On, on the retailer side, I think, you know, fundamentally, this is an industry that is much less penetrated than any other commerce industry. And so we assume that 25% of grocery over the next five years is going to move online. And as a result, we need to equip our retail partners with solutions like Fabric, which we talked about earlier, with solutions that help them move their businesses online in a way that's still very profitable for them and continue. Uh, continues to generate growth opportunities for them. 
And then finally, uh, with advertising, we think that there is a huge opportunity for CPG advertisers to get completely new food products discovered by a new audience where you know, they may not be able to get carried in the shelves of, of retailers, but they might be able to reach a very sp particular audience on Instacart and then you know, over time, uh, maybe end up on the shelves. So uh, we're very excited to see ourselves as kind of the food accelerator and the food ally of, of the future. And and uh, we think we have a, a very ambitious journey ahead of us.